Welcome to How to Benefit from an Extraordinary Mindset. I'm your host, Michelle Risa. Mindset is all the rage these days, from Main Street to Wall Street. Why? Because the benefits are huge. From reducing stress, to giving us more energy and better health, to improved problem solving, and certainly enhanced communication, which then results in much better uh, relationships in both your personal and business life. As the CEO and founder of Collaborative Solutions Global, I've been offering my clients these benefits for over 20 years. I help them see themselves differently, see the world differently, and in so doing, they leave a legacy that they are proud of and truly a legacy the world needs. So today we will be discussing how you can obtain an extraordinary mindset using Nelson Mandela as inspiration. And I now would like to introduce my wonderful, brilliant colleague, Dr. Stephen Hobbs. Stephen. Well, hi, Michelle. Great to um, certainly be here. And even though it's uh, very remote <laughs> in terms of how we're doing this. So um, just as a way to situate myself in all of this is that I guide managers and leaders to become facilitative mentors so that they can use this educating approach to uh, help them with their managing and leading. And what I've been fascinated with over the years is how do managers and leaders develop a mindset for managing and leading and how do they sustain it? How do they grow that? And that's why I'm looking forward to our conversation this evening. And I am too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Um, well, let's just give everyone two ideas of mindset. Yes, the traditional mindset that is pretty fixed, which means, you know, we were born with a particular mindset. Um, so the qualities are inborn and the qualities are unchangeable. That's one theory. And the other, of course, is that it's a growth mindset, which means it's changeable. And as we um, work on the abilities to uh, develop and strengthen our mindset in any particular way, our mindset changes. Right? And that seems to be the two ideas and definitions of mindset. Um, I'd like to just add uh, with the, the scientific proof that we now know that between stimuli and our re reaction to it, there actually is a gap, right, that enables us to then it, utilize that gap to not actually react but respond to that stimuli. And so, in fact, have the power and the choice in terms of how we respond to life. So I'd like to um, talk about how did Mandela develop his extraordinary mindset. I think he used that gap very skillfully. And, uh, what and, and I think that one of the ways to help us understand that, Michelle, is um, to read one of his quotes from his autobiography, okay. Okay. The, Long, um, the Long Walk to Freedom. And this quote comes from the time when he's leaving university, moving into the workplace, and he's going to pursue his uh, contribution as a lawyer. And this is very much a reflective um, uh, insight around his mindset. So let me read it to you, and then we'll take a look at it. Okay. I had no epiphany, no singular revelation, no moment of truth, but a steady accumulation of a thousand slights, mm -hmm. a thousand indignities, a thousand unremembered moments produced in me an anger, a rebelliousness, a desire to fight the system that imprisoned my people. There was no particular day in which I said, from henceforth, I will devote myself to the liberation of my people. Instead, I simply found myself doing so 
and could not do otherwise. I really, I, I like this quote when I was reading back through it, I had a chance to read uh, the book again. And what this quote really means for me is it's not like a light switch with this notion of mindset. It, it's it's a, an accumulation and I see it's the situations and the experiences and they help to, to frame. So this sort of links in and, and aligns with that growth mindset that you I've just shared as, as part of the definition. So that's why I like this quote. So I didn't know, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? In addition to, you know, feeling so deeply uh, his words and, and I, I sense, you know, empathetically, you know, what it could, I couldn't imagine to experience that, yeah? Um, yes, to your point. Uh, he. It, it was an accumulation, and I think that's actually true of, of many of us, right? It's not something we're literally focused on, but the accumulation of our experiences, in fact, then bring us to a shift, can bring us to a shift, without it being, as I think he's saying, consciously saying, okay, this occurred, and now here's my new perspective, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah, for sure. It's like, it's not a light switch. <laughs> a lot of people go, where's that light switch? No, it's not that quite that way. So he, he gave us a really great quote to look at. Right. I'd like to, um, you know, I found some quotes as well. And uh, one that I really love from him is, it always seems impossible until it's done. That is, that is so true. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that that quote, it, it can be found with his picture. And that pic, it, when you see the picture, and you will, it, it's very much a, it's sort of like a slight little lean of his head. And you know that it has meaning to him. And he's wanting to share that quote. And I think it's worth actually saying again, Michelle. How about saying it again? It's it always seems impossible until it's done, right? And I know that but really, don't we, when we're challenged, yes, and working hard at something, right? It, it does feel that way. It really yeah. does. And the quote just enables us to get through it. I think it's inspiring because it enables me to get through that impossible perception and mindset knowing, right, I will reach the end and it will be done. Yes. Yeah, so really, really appreciate that. Um, so how do we identify, I'd like to ask this question, Stephen, you know, how do we identify which mindset we have? Like, how do I know what kind of mindset do I have? Um, I can answer it first or I'll, I'll, I'll jump into it if you, if, okay, sure. let me try. Yeah. For me, to really know what my mind set is, is listening to my self-talk, right? If it's grumpy <laughs> and <laughs> I'm annoyed with anything that occurs and if things aren't flowing perfectly, you know, I hear that annoyance or critic. Ooh, I hear sometimes that, right? The, I'll even call it a three-year-old temper tantrum, Yes. right? Versus, of course, same situations, things are not working out exactly as I had hoped, right? And the voice can be saying to me, sweetheart, it's fine. We'll get, th we'll get through it. We'll, we'll do what we need to do. And I'd like to share you know, with you and everyone that that I have found to be a wonderful litmus or, or a way to measure and appreciate where our, my mindset is. What about you, Stephen? Well, I'm, I'm going to get the flip talk of self-talk is about talking with others. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, I'm working with managers and leaders all the time, and it's how to help them understand the words that they're using expresses their uh, mindset. But as they listen to the words of their staff, they're expressing their mindset and how do you blend those together in a workplace, how to get onto the direction that you need to go. If you truly listen to the words people are using, 
wow, it is so powerful to understand the mindsets that you're working with. And um, I, I just encourage people just listening is so important to mindset. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's precious feedback. Oh, for sure. And I know that you you have something of a, a like a, a, some research that suggested an approach like similar to listening. So what was that again? We, we talked about it the other day. Um, research. Um, well, I, oh, okay. So one other way that I often check in is to literally slow down. Yes. Right? When we're multitasking, very hard to tune into how we are, right? And actually add to that slowing down, taking a breath, right? Which we know again through science changes our heart rate, right? Slows down our heart rate and literally, you know, has a coherence, creates a heart coherence throughout our being. Uh, so yeah, just doing that enables us to literally shift, shift our mindset. And I would think that Nelson Mandela, we don't know this for sure. We, we tried to look for it, but I'm sure that with all the meetings that he went into over his time, except I, I probably in the prison, but he was still meeting with people, right? Meeting with the others who were there, his to be able to use this slow down breathing technique to be present with the people. I think there is something to be said for that. Right. When you're especially meeting like with a, a large group of people, like stakeholders in a business meeting, it, it plays itself out as well. Right. So, so why don't can we do one for just one or two minutes? All right. Sure. So if people just place and you could have this under the table. Right. So it could be at a meeting. Just place one palm inside the other and just drop one thumb and then drop the other. So your thumbs are crossed. So it doesn't matter. Right and left, left or right. Put one palm inside the other. So your palms are facing your body, right? So they're inside one another. Just drop the thumb so it's now touching and crossing. And I'll just show it so it looks like that. Yeah? OK. And here is the breath, a little different from long, deep breathing. You inhale nose. Exhale nose. Inhale mouth very subtly. Exhale mouth. Inhale nose. Exhale mouth. Inhale mouth. Exhale nose. That's the sequence. One more time. Yes, one more. Inhale nose. Exhale nose. Making it just slightly a little longer each time. Inhale mouth. Exhale mouth. Inhale nose. Exhale mouth. Inhale mouth. Exhale nose. In just that time, right, we've totally shifted our mindset. Oh, for sure. And I think it's a good practice to get in wherever you're going to shift gears, right? We hear that sort of phrase, the shift mindset, whether going into a meeting, coming home through the front door in a sense, in the, in the, in the car. There's lots of places to do that. So thanks for sharing that with right. us, Michelle. Before a presentation, right? You're very nervous. This will aid in your ability to be calmer and grounded and present. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So um, I'd like to um, actually another quote uh, that will will be able that will w we will show is uh, with his wonderful smile saying, "I never lose. I either win or learn." <laughs> the the whole notion of win and learn because we, we tend to hear win and win i will use win and grow he uses win and learn 
we're on the path to uh, a great mindset when we start putting into action these kind of quotes and the extra the activities that you're you're sharing yeah. so and i'm thinking that maybe uh, some personal stories would fit in here really well right now what do you think okay i'll i'll be happy to do you want me to jump or you want to sure, start? you go for it sure you right. go for it so i i love that quote uh, because we, we mostly think about win-lose and the ability to learn, right, when we quote-unquote lose is, is, of course, what is, is such a different perception and, and, and experience. So I was at a conference and um, I recall saying to this group, you know, that what we manifest begins on the inside and ripples to the outside. And um, I saw a woman uh, who was very close to me, just her eyes open and her body come erect and she blurted out, you know, how uh, that was not going to be uh, possible and, and, and there's, there's nothing that she could possibly agree with. And um, though in, a pa in the past, even I would have thought, you know, that I had done something wrong, that I lost, I was able to shift it to, you know, look at her and smile. And someone um, in, in that space later said to me, wow, your response to her um, accusation was just so remarkable. How did you stay so calm? And, you know, I was able to say to her, you know, given the inner work that I've, I've done, you know, instead of feeling like I lost, you know, I'm able to learn and see from others, you know, who they are, right? What is my responsibility and what is not? And so clearly it was, um, you know, a wonderful opportunity to, I wouldn't say win, but learn. Oh, oh for sure. So you would say that that sort of went inside out. You, the learning was coming from the inside and it came out in your expression, your conversation with the people. Sure. I rippled what I, what I, who I am, my, my knowledge of who I am. Yes, instead of, get, again, reacting, as we discussed in the very beginning, I had the consciousness to respond to her with a smile and have compassion for her point of view without taking it in a negative way. So... I learned a little bit about myself and her at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the story that I would offer is, is a little bit, again, like the flip side. We seem to be doing yeah. a, the flip side conversation here, which is great, which is great. The, I'm sort of going from the outside in because I've had the pleasure of working on six or seven continents. I'll do the seventh soon. <laughs> and um, so I've had a lot of international experience. And in my consulting role, this was like a profound learning that influenced my mindset because I always find myself sort of at, at loggerheads. I wasn't quite getting where I needed to get to or the meetings had a little bit of grit in them. And I'm going, well, there's got to be a better way to do this. And then I realized is that when I get into a meeting, if we all define the terms and concepts that we're going to work with, agree to those terms and concepts and then make the map using those terms and concepts mm -hmm. then each of us are contributing to the group mindset that's another variable to look at but also we're influencing our own mindset so that approach then allowed me from meetings that i went to to another meeting to another meeting I was going, this is actually really great because my mindset is growing. And it's an outside in, but it's now becoming my self-talk is the inside out. And I'm going, wow, this is great. And as soon as I clicked into that, Michelle, the meetings, like they lost that little grit. They seem to flow in a, in a much better way. And it's just because I had people to find the terms and concepts, agree on those yeah. terms and concepts, yeah. and then make the map, bring it together to see where this is all going to end up. 
So that that would be my personal story to this, sort of the outside in, inside out. <laughs> They're merging. And what yes. a wonderful, what a wonderful gift, Stephen, that you're giving them, right? Because dialogue, as we all know, is so difficult these days. Yes. And the ability to have agreement, right, certainly fosters better dialogue. Yeah. So kudos. Thank you for yep. doing that all around the world. For um, sure. And I think that by sharing our personal stories, then we start to understand that inner outer dialogue that you were mentioning. Yeah, that's true. But it's also about creating the extraordinariness of the mindset because that reflection piece yeah. and, and looking at that extraordinary aspect. I always think of it, you know, good, great, uh, remarkable, but then there's this thing called extraordinary. <laughs> Extraordinary, yeah, yeah. Extraordinary. And that, I believe, we can certainly go and we can look at Nelson Mandela's work and keep looking at it and keep looking at it and, and seeing that. And that's why I think the, um, the last page, there's a quote. Mm -hmm. I've got it. last page. And I'd, like, and I'd like you to read that one, okay. because I, I think it's profound. And I'm going to read it. I, I will. And, and uh, here we go. I have walked that long road to freedom. I have tried not to falter. I have made missteps along the way. But I have discovered the secret that after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. I've taken a moment here to rest, to steal a view of the glorious vista that surrounds me, to look back on the distance I have come. But I can only rest for a moment, for with freedom comes responsibilities. And I dare not linger, for my long walk is not yet ended. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that an amazing quote? And it happens to be the last one in the book. In the book, yes. Such a, a, a profound metaphor and hints at this notion of the mindset that he must have had and how he used it and developed it as he moved forward. Right. So as we're coming to a close here, Stephen, let's give people a call to action. Yes, what they can do sure. um, to create their extraordinary mindset. You know, I've already discussed having self-talk work miracles for me, right? Um, you've talked about collaborative conversations with others. Um, so let's just say um, people listen, you know, listen to these wonder the wonderful feedback that you get from other people. Um, I'll, and I'll, if, if one last thing is to smile. <laughs> Smiling changes your mindset. You know, whether it's face-to-face -face or on the phone, people are truly able to hear your smile. And so I'll ask you um, any, some few tips that you'd like to add to that, please. Um, yes, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be kind of a fun one. Why not write your autobiography? Uh, like <laughs> that would do it. Because that will give you a chance to do a reflection in, reflection on, write it up, see what your mindset is. Did you have a fix? Did it grow? Where, what happened to it? Right. The other part, and this sort of links to the things that I, I truly believe in, is have some chats with a mentor. Someone has some lived experience you can tap into and have some conversation with them. And I, I thought of this one the other day, and it just popped into my mind. It's sort of like having a conversation with yourself but always referring to yourself in the third person. So if I was doing it, it's sort of like talking to the hand and the hand would be going, Stephen, I need you to think about it from this perspective. Perfect. <laughs> Use That's your a, name. 
Yeah, yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> You're brilliant. Lovely. That's a great idea and very simple. So let, let us say that we, um, people can learn more and discuss more on Facebook. And the exact URL, which it, you, they see, you see here, is www.facebook.com forward slash collaborative solutions global uh, forward slash. So again, come and join the conversation. Let's deepen the conversation and have you enjoy the benefits of an extraordinary mindset. And so in closing, uh, anything, Stephen, you'd like to add? So one of the things that I would just close off myself is something that you mentioned, Michelle, when you said about accountability. I believe you're accountable for your mindset. And I believe in my heart of hearts that Nelson Mandela was accountable for his mindset. And he would, if he was sitting with us, he would go, yeah, I was accountable for my mindset. So that's the final thought that I would share on, uh, on, the, on the show for myself. I, I have found him to inspire me endlessly as I think that after spending 27 years yeah, um, in a prison, uh, whether house arrest or literally within a prison, that he managed through his conscious mindset, instead of being very angry and resentful and revengeful, which I would have totally understood, he emerged with compassion. He emerged with the ability to reach reconciliation, forgiveness. And with that mindset, he was able to change not only himself and his people, but the entire country and inspire the world. So that's what I'd like to feel in my body as we say thank you. Thank you, Stephen, so much for this conversation, this dialogue, this mindset that we created together. And Thank you. We will we'll have a more series on, uh, so hope you will join us. Please come and learn how you too can benefit from an extraordinary mindset. <laughs>